I'm always on the hunt for good leadership books, and there's uh, one that I've recently come across that I've started to read that I'm enjoying. It's called Extreme Ownership, How U.S. Navy SEALs Lead and Win. It's by Jocko Wilnick and Leif Babin. They were both Navy SEALs, and um, they talk about this topic around leadership, and they talk about there are no bad teams, only bad leaders. Well, and let me say, first of all, that leadership in this context or any context isn't just about the CEO, but really leadership at any level of an organization. They happen to be in the military, so any level of, of the military. Certainly, if you're a platoon leader, you have responsibility for that platoon. You are a leader. Uh, but it's pretty uncomfortable, too, because you're talking about leadership, and not having to point your finger at someone and say, you know what, it was their fault, or it was about the weather, or it was because they didn't do what they were supposed to do, or they didn't do it fast enough, or they didn't do it in the right way. Well, ultimately, their point is that the leader can't give away that accountability. It's up to them to make decisions, bring the team together, and they're only as strong as their team. And so they relay this story about Hell Week. And Hell Week, uh, they were in the third day, this team uh, was in the third day of Hell Week. Um, and they had spent 72 hours almost up all the time, but for one hour. And now they're given these boats to go out into the Pacific Ocean. There's six people on the team and there's one leader in each of these boats. And they spend a lot of time going back and forth into the ocean. They run along the beach holding these boats above their heads, going into the ocean. And what they were watching in this particular case was team number two was always winning the races by a lot. And team number six was always finishing last. And so they were getting on team number six. If you're team number two, you, one of the rewards is you get to take a break from one race. Uh, but team number six, has extra duty to do. And it's just getting worse and worse. And if it doesn't improve, the leader of team number six will not make it in Navy SEALs. So what one of the commanders decided to do was switch the leadership, only the leader in team number two and team number six. And what happened in the next race was that team number six actually won the race. And then they continued the race and team number two and team number six were neck and neck all the time. So surprisingly, to some degree, uh, it wasn't about the team, but it was about how those leaders led their team and how they got them to work in unison. Because what was happening in team number six is they weren't functioning as a team, they were functioning as, as individuals. So we all face this in terms of leadership, no matter what level that you're at. First of all, it's sometimes really uncomfortable and it's hard to say, it was my fault. It was my responsibility, I'm the leader, because you want to deflect that to somebody else on, on your team. But at the end of the day, it is about the leadership. And perhaps, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about this, there are no bad teams, only bad leaders, for what it's worth. Mm -hmm.